school this year that you're doing, that we just need your prayers in our travel, and that, you know, everybody has been so appreciative, and of course, we only tell them that God has led us there. We're so thankful. He was. I guess kind of request. Remember our home, remember our children, grandchildren, and remember our home. Church will remember Jean Bay when she's been having some great for the problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't remember my wife, she's going to have a test done here in the next uh, week or so. Find out what's wrong. Remember, mom and dad, they're feeling a little under the weather, they want to be here, but they're got some kind of cold or something. And remember, brother Todd Dillon in your prayers, I thought. Spoke with him a little bit yesterday through message, and he said he's still in a lot of pain. So keep praying for him, pray for all the lost and all the sick and afflicted. Yes. All right. A lot to be thankful for. Let's pray for this meeting today. Be sure as we bow down and give the Lord glory for what he's done for us. He's been awful good to every one of us. Yet we're not really worthy of it, but yeah. Thankful that he still smiles on us occasionally. We bless him. All right, nothing else. Everybody able, willing, move down this way and pray with us. We're we'll bow up front here. And, uh, Jeff, you lead us in prayer this morning. Let's everybody pray. Everybody can take advantage of this time. Always remember me and God, we would bow before you this morning, Lord. Lord God, so unworthy. We call out upon you and ask you, Father, for everything, God. So God, we thank you so much that that's what you're there for. That we can call out upon you, God. And Father, as much as I could ask you for anything, Lord, I would ask you to bless the one, God, who don't know you. God, what a wonderful life that you're missing out on, Father. The blessings that come, Lord. Lord, the heartbreak, the heartache, Lord, that come. So God, we know that you're always there and we can call out upon you, Father. Oh, God, you never fail to see it, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, to bless this little service. Ask you, God, that you bless each and every one that's made up their mind to come out this morning, God. Lord God, that they may come, that they might be able to come to feel that spirit, Lord. And Father, just to worship you, Lord, for just a few little short hours, God, while we're here. God, we thank you, Father, for what our hearts already felt this morning. Just to hear the, the songs, God, that we're able to sing to you, Lord. Lord, bless the ones that are struggling, Lord, through this life. See, like some type of life, Lord, can really dump a load on a person. But dear God, I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us, Lord, that we can realize, Lord, that we can know that down in our heart, Father, that we can call out on you, Father, and get all the help that we need, Lord. But God, it's kind of up to us, Lord. So we got, we got to make that first move, Father be able to call upon you. And Lord, I know, I don't know any time, Father, that you haven't comforted me, Lord, or helped me just a little bit, Lord, when the times get hard and times struggle, Lord. Dear God, we thank you, Father. We thank you so much, God, that you're there for us, Lord. Now, Father, as we go on down through this service, Lord, God, just help us put away the things that are going on outside these doors. And Lord God, let us concentrate on you. Bless the brethren that comes to preach, Lord. Lord God, would you give him the words that we need, Father, just to lift us up for another day. Then today, tomorrow, Father, another day will start, and we'll need you again, God. Amen. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, so much for this wonderful day, the beautiful morning that you set before us, God. The wonderful life, God, that comes along with serving you, Lord. So, Father, we just ask your blessings on us this day that you watch over us and bless us, Lord. And, Father, we just ask it all in Jesus' precious name, Lord. And amen. Amen. <coughs>
Always thankful for prayer. It's a lot to us. We need it. Anybody got a song on your mind this morning? Do you feel free to the Lord if you do? Really good to be here this morning. Small crowd, but beautiful crowd. Good to see each and every one of you. That's more. We ask for your prayers. We'll try to sing this song. <clears throat> if you know it, help us sing it. Bless the Lord. I have heard of a land on the far away strand is a beautiful home of the soul built by Jesus on high there we Never. Mm -hmm. 
I haven't sang this song for a long time, even in my head or in the vehicle, but it came to my mind this morning. I've got the words here on my phone. I'm going to try to sing it. In a dream I was there when they crucified Jesus. In my dream I saw his great agony. I ran to the man that was piercing his body. And when I pulled him away, that soldier was me. Yes. Though only a dream, I crucified Jesus. It was my sins he bore. On Calvary's tree, Amen. when he prayed alone in Gethsemane's garden, I believe he prayed that night for me. Amen. Simon Peter was there, and his heart was so troubled. And many that Jesus had touched by the way, they beheld their Lord, their bleeding and dying. And in the dream I could see that soldier was me, though only a dream. I crucified Jesus. It was my sins he bore on Calvary's tree. When he prayed alone in Gethsemane's garden, I believe he prayed. 
that night for me. Yeah. For some reason it always comes to my mind but when I go know. in prayer about them making him walk to that cross and knowing that he laid down his life willingly for all of us. Mm. And I heard a preacher preach one time about seeing him on the cross and trying to make it up, looking up his body of all the stuff that happened to him and what it would be like when you got to his eyes, seeing that he knew death was coming, mm -hmm. but he had such a love that he gave it for all of us. That's right. Not just for the person that tries to live a righteous life, but those that are truly sin sick, yeah. that don't know him. Amen. If you don't know Christ Jesus, ask him for forgiveness. Get on your knees and start praying. Have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. Ask him what needs to be removed for you to humble yourself down and give it all to him. It's the only way that you can do it. Amen. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Praise the Lord. So Terry, come. Take what time you feel like, brother. Everybody be much in prayer for you. Bless you, brother Terry. Wonderful place to be this morning. Thankful unto the Lord for all that He's given us. All my brothers and sisters and those that, that walk not according to the way of this whole world, but they seek the Lord of mercy. And that's what it's all about. What Christ did for us, the mercy that He showed forth from us. And reading a little bit several days now, actually, kind of studying a little bit in it, but. Uh, there is a, you've heard it said about, uh, it's come from the book called The Art of War, out of all the, the books that you can think of, and, but it, it tells us to know ourselves and to know our enemies. And if we would do that, that we could fight many a battle with victory. Yeah. And now that's just written by man. That's just a natural book, The Art of War. But it's good teaching if you if you apply it to the gospel mm -hmm. because we realize according to the bible here that the lord wouldn't have you ignorant. he wants you to know where to stand and what to stand on amen he wants you to know in this word that we are to examine ourselves that we we should know ourselves <laughs> what we are and to get to the gist of it if we know ourselves, we know our enemy. And I'll add one more to that. We need to know our God above all. Yes. Amen. We need to know that he is forevermore <laughs> present. That he spoke all things into existence. And all things that we see, touch, feel, and witness is because of him, because of this life that he has given us. And I began to realize well, I, I took it step by step to know thyself. And then I went over in Genesis and I began to read how that God formed man from the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. And from that dust, he made us clay and he formed us and he breathed in our nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, Behold, man became <clears throat> a living soul. Now we was formed in his image. We are like our God, our Creator, in all ways, everything that we are, we are like our God. And we realize that as He began to create all these things, now that, He made man in the sixth day, but He made much more than just man. He made the, the whole world and all things that have been made, He made. And it said that He created Eve because it wasn't good for man to dwell alone. And the scripture said that he, he made Eve from the side of that. He caused a deep sleep to come upon him. And he made Eve for Adam's sake, for it wasn't good for him to dwell alone. And so now we get, begin to realize what we are, that we are dust, and we are much more than dust, especially for the Christian population. 
Because we read in the scripture over here where it said, if you receive Christ in your life, it said he coming to his own, his own were receiving, but as many as did receive him, he made them sons of God. Now think about that. That we are children of God. Those that re have received Christ. And furthermore, I began to read a little more there in Genesis how that he created all things in that garden and he placed man over all things. He gave him dominion mm -hmm. over all things of this world. Now dominion, friends, means that he was dominant to all of it and that he called it all. And God gave him a commandment to keep that garden. And he kept that garden. And it said that all things was brought before him, all animals, and he named them all because of that dominion that God gave us. That we are the top of the line as far as this earth is concerned. All that God has created, he put man over it all. And I began to read how that he placed in that garden the tree of knowledge. And he said, of this tree, don't eat thereof. For the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. Now unto that time, Adam and Eve both was immortal. <clears throat> that, they, that death had no, no power over it. But there was this serpent. Now we're beginning to look a little bit into our adversary. Right. There was this serpent in the garden. And he beguiled Eve to eat of that fruit. And he stated in all his subtlety and his wisdom, the subtleness of that little devil. He began to tell her that it would be good for knowledge. Mm -hmm. And he went to bragging on this. And he, he convinced her to take of that fruit. And from that fruit she gave to Adam, and he did take it, partake of it. And as they become knowledgeable, they saw that they were naked. And they hid themselves in the garden. And it said in the cool of the evening, the Lord came along, walking. And he called for them, and they would not answer. And he called again. And finally Adam answered. And he asked, why did I hid thyself from me? Because I am naked. Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eat of the tree? Now God knows what was going on. He knows all things, friends. But he wanted it from the mouth of Adam. Adam began to explain, the woman that thou gave me, she did offer me this fruit, and I did eat. He goes to Eve, and he asks her, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. He goes back to the serpent, the adversary, and he said, because thou hast done this thing, you're going to crawl upon your belly all the days of your life, and you're going to eat of the dust. You're looking at some of the dust this morning, friends, mm -hmm. but not just the dust. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's right. And he that soweth unto the flesh shall reap death, but he that soweth unto the spirit shall reap life eternal. Yeah. This is the promise that our God has given us. That's right. That that dominion that Adam had, he lost there. But I want to tell you, now we're going to get into a little bit about our God, to know our God. I want to tell you about a man called Jesus. And the Bible represents him as the second Adam. Mm -hmm. That when he came, he set up and fixed everything right back for us. That we threw him out. That we through him, when we give our lives unto him, that we can have that eternal life again. We can have that dominion again. He told us in the scriptures on over there that everything, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and that which you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, if that's not dominion, you tell me what <laughs> is. We have that dominion through Christ that lives in us. The church has that power. And when I say church, I'm not speaking about this house that we dwell in. Right. I'm not speaking about one man. I'm not speaking about uh, individuality here. I'm speaking of the church of Jesus Christ, every individual that has given his life to the Lord, that you have dominion 
that Christ give it back to you, that you have eternal life. We have it here and in the world to come. I want to tell you about what it takes. We want to examine ourselves again here, just like the scripture tells us. It tells us to put on the full armor of God. It tells us about this warfare that we're in. That our feet be shod with preparation of the gospel. Girded about the loins of the truth. Breastplate of righteousness. The shield of faith whereby we can block off all those fiery darts of the evil one when he comes against us. The helmet of salvation. Helmet of righteousness, the sword of salvation, which is the word of God. I correct myself in there. Now we want to concentrate on that. The sword, which is our weapon. Think about it. The word of God. Now we know that, that the word was with us, or was with God, and the word loved God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten. We know what the word is, it's Christ. That is the power. That is the weapon that we choose. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We can't fight with flesh and blood and expect to win in this life. But we wrestle against principalities, evil in high places. That's, that's our, our fight, friends. And I'm telling you, the only way that we can win is through Christ. Mm -hmm. If that blood is applied to our lives. Yes. Because a carnal mind thinks carnal. Amen. A man that is carnal, he, he, he might flare up with anger and want to fist fight you naturally. But the Bible tells us that that's not our way. That's right. That our way is a spiritual way. That we battle with this right here. Just as when Christ was tempted in, uh, in the, the wilderness with the old devil, he went to this right here and he used scriptures to combat, combat him. And I'm telling you right now that the old devil, he knows this scripture better than I do. Mm -hmm. He knows it better than you do. Mm -hmm. He tries to hit every loophole and get you tangled up in it. I have seen many times in life that uh, men from their own confession that they get tangled up with things in, in this old world that they would use the scriptures and try to uh, use that as a, a crutch. But I'm telling you, it won't stand, friends. That this is salvation. This is freedom. In this, it casts out fear. Perfect love in this. Yeah. And it casts out all fear. Right. All troubles. We read in the scriptures over here in the back. I believe it's in. Uh, if, I can, if I can remember the, a little bit of it, uh, about how that uh, God expects us to live our lives. That He has uh, He's given us a straight path to walk therein, and if we veer to the left or to the right at any time. That if we let this flesh get in the way, he's warned us about what the cause of that would, uh, the, what the repercussions of that would be. He told us to walk therein, to keep our eyes focused upon the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. To walk therein, that's Amen. great. Life. It's a narrow way. It's a narrow way, I tell you. And few there be that find it according to the scriptures. And broad is that path unto destruction. So if we get to thinking about ourselves and examine ourselves and keep ourselves where we need to be, then we need no, nobody else to show us the way. Christ is the only person we need to show us the way. That straight path that he set before us in the scriptures to read and abide in. We read of, of how that Apostle Paul said there is a warfare going on between this flesh and and the spiritual man. Yeah. A constant warfare. Yes. When we get up in the morning, we face it, and we'll fight that battle until we go to sleep that night. Amen. And I've been told you, the victory is in Christ and Him only. That's right. In this word. The blood that He shed upon the tree of the cross, friend, there is no, shed, no remission of, of sin without the shedding of blood. That blood He shed upon the tree of the cross, if you've received it in your life and it's covered you, you're homeward bound. You may have erred. You may have slipped and slide. As long as we focus upon the Lord, we ask repentance. Come back to him. Focus again. 
start a new, a new day, a new focus, a new, a new walk. Constantly, that battle is there. Constantly. We've not won that yet. But Christ, He's won. He's our victory. Thank the Lord. It's high time that Christian men and women that you would realize the authority and the power that is invested in you. <coughs> that which God sent his son to establish here upon this earth. That you can't just live and walk any way you want to walk out here in life. Yeah. But if you keep yourself according to the words of God, if you keep yourself under subjection at all times, that those promises that he gave us, that he will fulfill. Amen. He that eateth of my body and drinketh of my blood I will be with. And in the last day, I will raise him up. Yeah. You think about these promises yes. that we have. You think about the, the weight of these promises. <clears throat> that when Christ came, he restored all things. He said, I make all things new. He restored all things that we had lost in Adam. That had been sought after. All the ages until Christ appeared. Men had sought diligently after this to recover this through sacrifices of animals, through prayer, supplications, fastings. And when Christ came, he that received Christ received it all right back. God gave you that. That's the free gift of God. And no man can boast in it because we got it through Christ Jesus, his son. Right. No man can boast of it. Amen. You can't earn this or even nothing in your worth. You cannot earn this. You must, with a broken heart and contrite spirit, you must come out of your field of sin and seek Christ with everything in you. Right. Ask him, Lord, I know what I am. Know yourself that you are a sinner. God concluded us all under sin that he might have mercy upon us all. Amen. Know yourself. Know your enemy. He told Peter, Satan seeketh to sift thee like wheat. The scripture tells us that he's here to steal, kill, and destroy. If you're on the outside of the ark of safety this morning, I want you to know that you've got one on your heels. He's trying everything in his power to destroy you, to kill you, to sift thee like wheat, just like Christ said about Peter. But I want you to also know that you've got a, a God in heaven that is having mercy upon you. Even though you're outside of his realm, he is protecting you. It's the only reason you're here this morning. You're here to hear the words that's spoken from this stand right here, telling you that you have a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And our God is great. Yes. And victory is in him and him only. And there's nothing you can do. Save surrender. Under this man called Jesus. Amen. I want that heart to break this morning. I'm trying to, to yield this sword. That it might. Bust up that old Tony. Sonny heart of yours. I want you to realize the great love that Christ had for you. Yeah. The suffering that he went through. The beatings, the lashes, that ye might be healed. How that upon the tree of the cross that they pierced his side and the blood and the water flowed, that ye may be cleansed. How that when they laid him in the grave, that on the third and glorious morning he arose, yep. that one day we might rise too. Yes. And this is our promise, friends, in him. When he went away, he said, I go away and make it to prepare your place that where I am, ye may be also. Yes. The great love of God, he loved his hands creation in so much that he sent his son down here that you and I should not perish but have everlasting life and have it more abundantly, the Lord said. Amen. A new commandment I give unto you, Christ said, to love one another as I have loved you. Now, the world has said that's always been a commandment. That's one of the Ten Commandments. No, 
The Ten Commandments says to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. Christ said to love one another as I have loved you. He died upon the tree of the cross, gave his life for you and I. Yeah. And he's telling us that we must live that life too. Yeah. And it's my, it's my heart's desire that wherever I'm found in life, that I can burn this life up, lifting up this hand yeah. unto the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and telling the world about what a great Savior we have. Yes. And that all these great promises that he's given us in this good word right here, that that love that I received many years ago when I gave my life to the Lord, that I could let that project forward to you, that you might get a little glimpse of the light that's shed forth, that you might say in your heart, I want what he's got. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want that peace that when I lay down at night, that I know I have an upper, better kingdom, a home to go to if this life ends tonight. Yeah. Friends, you can have it. It's a free gift. Yeah. He sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession as I speak. Yeah. How do I know that? Because he's not called it to close yet. Right. Yeah. He's still on the throne. He's still making intercession. You have time and space opportunity to make it right this morning. All you have to do is get that adversary out of the way. As I speak, he may be on the other side, uh, speaking in your ear, saying, you've got all the time in the world. You, mm -hmm. you still got to do this. You've got to do that. All these play purges and things you think that are wonderful and you plan plans in your life to do. That's how you work. Add up to a hill of beans. We're talking about eternal life. Amen. Right. Yes. That it is in the balance. Amen. I've said it many times. We stand between the two eternities. We as human beings with our lives, we stand between the two eternities. Eternal life and eternal death. Yeah. Christ said, when I come on my right hand, I'll place the those that are mine, the sheep. And on my left hand, those that aren't his. <coughs> the goats. <coughs> There's going to be a great division on that day. The goats, he's going to say, part from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. The sheep, he's going to say, well done. Well done. Welcome ye into the joys of the Lord. And prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is God's will for us. That we'd not perish in hell. That was prepared for Satan, his angel, and for that, that part of every nation that forgives God. The love that I'm trying to show forth to you this morning, and the time and the opportunity that I have to stand before you, is through Jesus Christ. And that sword, that is a double-edged sword, and it's sharp enough to divide asunder joint and marrow, spirit and soul. That's what's going to cut you down. And that's what's going to raise you up. <clears throat> Lest ye come forward and confess with your mouth and are buried in a baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Once you receive that, think about that, that new creature in Christ Jesus and the fulfillment of what I spoke to you this morning about what Christ returned to us, that's where you get it. Right there. You get everlasting life. You get that power and that authority. You can go out here and you can tell your friends what good things the Lord has done for you. And with power and authority you have. That means, friends, that Holy Spirit that dwells within you, when you read this word right here, my spirit and my word, they do agree. And that authority is granted unto you to go out here and to speak these blessed words of God. That lives could be changed. And before that, if we get in here with just carnal knowledge, we're just going to skim the surface of it. We're not going to get the true meaning of it. But by that Holy Spirit that God has granted unto us, praise His holy name, He knows exactly what this vessel needs and what it takes to enlighten our hearts and our minds, to prepare it 
Bust that old stony heart up, prepare it to where it can receive all this. Yes. That's what it takes. Amen. So we can reveal it unto you, and it can do the work. That's right. My word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I send. Praise the Lord. Amen. To know thyself, to know thy adversary, and to know our God. The whole mission of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Yes. Yeah. It will do that. We can know. You will not have you ignorant. You'll know yourself. And every day we'll watch ourselves. We'll keep his flesh under subjection. This uh, dust, this dirt mm -hmm. in which he made us, in which old Satan devours. But we know that the suffering that we have here cannot compare to the glory that faces us on the other side. Yeah, right. That we are not excused from sickness, from pain, from broken hearts. That we're going to suffer it all as Christian men and women. We're going to suffer it all. But greater is he that dwells within us than he that dwells in the world. If we'll just cling on to that, we'll see by and by. We'll see that up in better kingdom. Amen. And all the promises that is written herein. Right. May the Lord bless you and keep you in my prayer. Come. Bless you. Right there. Good words. Yeah. here this, this morning. Hopefully it stirred up your minds and caused you to start thinking about some of the better things. Uh, if you're unsaved or not living where you should, hopefully it's convicted you. It's able to do that. And uh, like he said, he, his word will accomplish that word until he sent it. And we don't all together know when we're speaking it That's what right. the point or the destination is going to be of that, but we do know that God is going to accomplish is what he said, like bread cast upon the water. And that's, that's what we have to preach in season, out of season. That's what the scripture taught, taught uh, Timothy to do. And uh, same for us today. The instant in season, out of season, the free rebuke absorb with all long suffering and doctrine. Where he went on to let us know the time would come when men would not endure sound doctrine. And we can surely see that, and it's been around a long, long time, even in Paul's day. Some of his letters, he found that there was men not enduring the doctrine or the teaching that he had been given them, or the other brethren had been given them. And he said it's going to get worse as the day approaches, and we can surely see that today, too. So we're here this morning, and hopefully we've come with the right mind and prepared ourselves before we got here to be a part of the service. The Lord wants us to do that. So uh, we want to give him glory for all that he's done. I'm going to go over to the book of Mark this morning in the sixth chapter and uh, read a few verses here uh, about a storm that took place. We've heard a lot about storms lately. Uh, one hit down south pretty hard and we've, we've experienced them here in our life before. Different types of storms, floods or blizzards, or, and they have a lasting effect on the area when it does hit there. It takes a while to get over it, and that's what we see taking place in our life spiritually sometimes when we have the storms come along. Sometimes it takes a little while to get everything back to where it should be, and maybe it's God sometimes directing us in a different direction like he did some other folks. But listen to what took place here. These brethren in chapter 6 of Mark had just seen a great, great multitude of people fed uh, with just a few loaves and a few fishes. And uh, they, it, that was a miracle that took place right before their eyes when they saw all those people, not counting the women and children, that were fed there that day. And as soon as they left there with that, and they even had some leftovers after that that was done, over that few few fishes and few loaves of bread. And they took up the fragments, I believe it said there, that there was about 12 baskets full. And they come to the point that they were getting ready to leave that group of 5,000 plus the women and children. And uh, the Lord was getting ready to take them somewhere. And he starts in verse 45, and he said, and straightway, 
he constrained his disciples, the Lord Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people. So remember that great multitude had been there with him. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he was alone on the land. His brethren are out on this boat in the middle of the sea, and the Lord's up on the mountain on the land, and he went up there to pray. And he saw them, the Lord, while he was on that mountain. Here they are way out in the middle of the sea. The Lord saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch, that's about between 3 and 6 a.m. in the morning, of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when he had passed over, they came unto the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship straightway, they knew him and ran through the whole region round about and began to carry about the beds of those that were sick, where they heard, their, heard he was, and whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were but for a border of his garment, and as many as touched him were made whole. Now as we look through this story here and see what took place, um, we see the Lord moving and helping these brethren in a situation that they were so far beyond help for themselves and what was going on around them that unless the Lord intervened, they were in bad shape. And there's been times in our lives that we've experienced that, that we've had storms raging. I'm sure you have, whether it's a physical storm that comes that you've got to try to weather, or whether it's health reasons or emotional, spiritual reasons, whatever it may be, there are storms that we are going to have to endure. Yeah. And I'm glad that we've got a ship that's able to withstand all the tempest that's going to come about. Yeah. It's able to withstand all those waves in the water that's going to be beaten against it and that she is going to be able to anchor safely over to the other side. We sing about her sometimes, the old ship of Zion. We talk about the one that's at the helm and the one that's the captain of the boat that's able to help us as we go through this life. Now, when we look back through time, we talked about how it takes a while to get over storms and back through the scriptures, I read this, I thought about the many different times through the Old Testament and the New Testament that we see a storm begin to come about. One of the first ones that come to my mind, there may have been more before it, but one of the first ones that come to my mind was back in the days of Noah. The writer lets us know in the New Testament, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days and the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. Now, there was a great flood a disaster, a great storm came, and the reason that it came was because of the sins of those people that were there. He saw that this world was wholly, completely given over to sin, and that they were going the wrong direction. And the scripture even said that it even repented God that he made man. And when we see this, we find that he chose to spare the people there through one man, Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives, and was told that we know the story, and I'm not going to linger on that story long. He was told to build a boat, an ark, and we find that he was a preacher of righteousness and preached that it was going to rain, 
But he never got one that would believe him other than his family being obedient to what God had told them to do, stayed on board. And there we see the storm began to come and as we're reminded of that many times when the flood started rising and I'm sure the first sound and the first clap of thunder that sounded there, they'd never heard anything like that as far as we can understand in the book of Genesis there. And when that first clap of thunder began to sound and the first raindrop began to fall, I'm sure then there were a lot of believers in what that they were told from old Noah. But it was too late then because the ark, the door of it had been shut and everyone had got on board and God allowed those that were on the inside to have safety, but those on the outside, they didn't have safety. I'm not sure how long that it took altogether for Noah to get everything together. We know that he preached there and we find 120 years, but we don't know altogether how long it took him to get everything on the boat and all that. But we do understand this, that those that were not ready and didn't obey what they were told was doomed on that day in that flood. Now I'm sure when that boat started floating, as we've told before, I'm sure that there was people crying out. I'm sure that there was probably fingernails and scratches all up and down the side of that gopher wood of people hollering and screaming. What a horrible, horrible time that that may have been. Yes. And I'm sure as we began to think about that horrible flood that just took place that we were talking about earlier, it may have just hit so fast that they didn't have time to run to that ark and run to that boat. Because the Bible teaches us also that when the Lord does return, He's reserved this earth unto fire. He's promised with that bow in the sky that He's not going to destroy this earth by a flood again, but that it's reserved unto fire. That on that day, that when the fire starts to fall, we're reminded that a quick work yeah. is He going to do. Yeah. And when He comes, as the brother has told us here, that the sheep will be on the right and the goats on the left, and we will see a quick work take place with the dead rising, the church being changed, and the destruction of God. As soon as the last soul was entered into that boat, the rain started to fall. Yeah. And as soon as the last brother and sister is called out of this world on that day, when that moment in the twinkling of an eye, then the fire is going to fall. There's not going to be one hair on the head of a Christian here on this earth that will be hinged or singed in that fire that's going to start falling that day. And I'm thankful of that, Amen. that we're going to be able to escape that. But it is reserved unto that. And that's a warning that he's given the people. So when we begin to see what God has done back there, that he's provided that storm as a storm to begin to bring judgment upon people, then we find as we move through the Old Testament again that there was another man by the name of Jonah. He was told to do something. He was a prophet of God and served God. And he began running the other direction because he didn't want to do what God had told him to do and had some bitterness in his heart. For the people of Nineveh. Yeah. And he ran the other direction. Because he didn't want to go preach to them. So that they would repent. And what did he do? He ran down to Tarsus. Got on a boat. And as he began to go out in the opposite direction. Of where he was supposed to go. God again caused a great storm to come about. And that ship started being tossed to and fro. The way the people that were on there. The mariners that they are referred to. Started throwing overboard. All the people. All the wear that it called it. That of goods and whatever that they were hauling on that boat to lighten the ship and it came to the point that they found out why that the storm had come about and it was because of the disobedience of that man that was told to go preach and he chose not to and went yeah. the other direction but God sent that storm and woke him up we find that he said even in the belly of that whale cried out and God heard him as he was down there in that fish that day and as he called out to God, God heard him, and then he got in a hurry and began to go and do what that he was told to do. So sometimes we find this as there was a judgment. A judgment had come because of that great storm. Then we find that he starts wanting to allow us to be turned in a different direction and refocus our attention. If we're going in the wrong direction, he wants us to be redirected sometimes when come, things come into our life. And he can use those to have, have us go a direction that we should go. So we find Jonah turned and went the other direction, even though his heart really wasn't in doing what that he was told to do. We find, and we're again, we're not going to speak about him all morning. 
but we can find today that God is able to wake us up and redirect us sometimes yeah. by the calamities or the storms that take place in our life that we go along. Then as we even come over to the New Testament in this same book in chapter 4, we find these brethren in another storm. Before they got to this one, this wasn't the first storm these brethren were in out on a boat. Now remember, these brethren were fishermen and they knew well how to handle a boat out on that sea and they knew well how to uh, be able to see a storm as it approached and they knew how to be able uh, to maneuver and to row and to try to get it to safety out of that storm. These brothers knew all about that. That was their life. They were fishermen and they were out on that sea and out on these boats constantly in their job doing that work as they were fishing out there trying to make a living. But here they were in chapter 4. We find the story when they were out there in the sea and uh, the Lord had already told them that we're going to go and we're going to pass over to the other side in that story about like that he told them right here. And when he began to sit out and sent out to that ship and got out into the water determined to get over to the other side, God had a purpose in that so that they could understand that there's going to come trials, there's going to come tests. And now you may say, well, the Lord's not going to test or going to try us. The Bible teaches us that he tempts no man with evil. And we find that there's going to be some things that we're going to have to go through to mold us, to prepare us for the next step that we're going to have to do as a Christian. And if we would uh, be a, a, a Christian enough and spiritual enough to understand when we're going through these things that we uh, can learn a lesson while that we're there, God can help us in the right direction while we're there. So they were there in chapter 4 of the book of Mark out on that ship and a storm came at the same time that they were out there but at that time the Lord was on board but at that point he was up there at the stern of the ship and it said while he was at the stern he laid his head on a pillow the pillow that the of the gears, if you will, the steering of that ship, and he laid his head on that pillar, and he was fast asleep, and they had to wake him up while that he was there, and he spoke the very words there that day, like he did here, and it calmed right down. So uh, we need to understand that God sometimes wants us in the midst of a storm like he did there to just call out upon him, to lean upon him, and we need to have faith as we're going through these trying times in our life that he's able to help us if we will just trust in him to get us out of that. So it may be different situations of a storm that we go through. It may be that we have emotional and one of the greatest storms that I ever had to wrestle with was the storm of sin that was raging in my life. I couldn't get it calmed down. I, there was nothing I could do to get out of the wrath of it, of the wind of it. I, it was a boisterous, boisterous storm. I, and as we began to see God moving, uh, we find that the only way I could get peace in the sin that was in my life was to trust in God to help me to overcome that and to speak that peace when I came God's way. That come the way that he spoke to me through his word, that sword that the brother was just talking about. Uh, that when we come and we understand that that word has convicted us and we've become sorry for that and we've repented of our sins and we then confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus let the church know what has taken place in our heart and then as the brother explained we're buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life and then we find that we've got the peace of God in our life when we made peace with God and when we were going contrary to his plan now as we see God moving again and another time we find the apostle Paul one day he was out in a major storm and it was even named we've seen this storm uh, that just came through and they name all these big hurricanes. We find Paul one day was in a storm by the name of Eurachlodon. Uh, it was a mighty, mighty storm. A tempest began to blow and he was out on that ship and we find while he was out there that the ship began to break and to crush, uh, crash along on the shore there and he said uh, to the folks that were on board, except these abide uh, on the ship. And then it, when it did crash, 
crash and it did crumble, he said, to grab a hold of a piece of the ship. So uh, when the storm's raging and it seems that it's getting the best of us, uh, still hang right on. We spoke here Friday night about the time that those people that heard the word of God, uh, that they clave, they began to cleave uh, unto the church, unto the Lord, uh, and unto his word. And if we will do that same thing, uh, like Paul advised them to do, to hang on to a piece of the ship, uh, then we can safely land on the shore one day after a while, and he'll be able to help us. But in this particular uh, story that we read to you there, I want you to understand as he started out uh, in verse 45 and left that great miracle that had taken place with that 5,000 uh, being fed, and it said in verse 45, straightway he constrained and told his disciples, we're going to go to the other side uh, to Bethsaida. Uh, now think about this for just a second. Did you notice uh, where they landed at up there in verse 53? He said, we're going ahead to Bethsaida in verse 45. Uh, and then in verse 53, where did they end up landing at? Uh, in Gennesaret. Uh, you're not going to find that they got to Bethsaida uh, until you turn over a whole other two chapters. Uh, in chapter 8 in verse 22, uh, when they finally got to where God wanted them to be. Now, uh, that doesn't mean in our time that we're going to be able to do things in our mind and accomplish the things that we want to on our own time. Uh, because God's time is totally different than our time. Uh, before he got them to Bethsaida, he had some lessons uh, for those brethren that they needed to learn. Uh, and sometimes before we get to the next step in our Christian walk, uh, there's some lessons that we need to learn in God's able uh, to take the situations that come around us uh, and allow us to be strengthened by his hand as we go through this life. Uh, and I'm thankful that he's able to do that because uh, after that they went through that storm and they were redirected by that and landed in a totally different place, uh, I want you some time to take time and look at chapter 7 uh, of some of the miracles that he performed when he got to that place uh, because he had uh, a job that he needed to do there and he wanted those brethren to be able to see those miracles as they went forward and God's able to get us where we need to be but it's going to be in his time and not ours. Then he went on in verse 46 and when he had sent them away he went and got upon a mountain to pray. Now here's the brethren out on that ship. It's a little different this time than it was the first time there in chapter 4 when he was with them on board. Now here he's away from them and even though it may seem God is so far away from us. Even though it may seem that he's distant in our life. You're going to go through some cold spells as a Christian. But be assured of this that God wants us when we're going through those times to rely upon the faith that's produced in our heart. And that he begins to inhabit the praise of his people. And that he don't all the time want us to go by feelings. It's good when we're in a good shot meeting and we feel his spirit so strong in our heart. Uh, but you're not going to feel that strong spirit all the time. Uh, and there's going to be times that God will allow us to go through some dry spells. Uh, uh, so that he can teach us a lesson and revive us. Uh, and to have our faith increase by leaning upon him. Uh, uh, even when we don't see him right before us. Uh, uh, but yet we've still got the faith. Even though that he's not giving us that blessing that we love to feel. Uh, and that we're not always up on the mountain so to speak. You can't live up there all the time. Uh, there's times you've got to go down in the valley. Uh, there's times that we've got to go through those storms. Uh, and I'm thankful that we've got a God that will be there with us when we do go through those storms. And when it was even, kind of getting dark out in the middle of the night, they were out there in the very midst of that sea. The Lord knew right where they were. He saw them struggling. He saw how that they were going through problems. Notice what those brethren were doing though in verse 47 and this can help us if we're going through trying times as a Christian. Look what they were doing in verse 47. It said that when the even was come, the ship was in the middle of the sea. Then in verse 40, 48 it said, and the Lord Jesus saw them toiling in rolling and the wind was contrary to them right in the middle of the night. Right in the darkest point of that night, here they were, 
Were they all working together? Why, sure they were. Here's a great storm that came. And if it had been just one of them rolling on one side of the boat, they wouldn't be able to get anywhere. If it had been the other one on the other side rolling, they wouldn't be able to get anywhere. We talk about that uh, with faith and work sometimes. Uh, but today we need to understand we've got to hold on to both. Uh, and all of them working and laboring and toiling and rowing together. Uh, they were able to press forward. Uh, they were able uh, to have a little bit of comfort by leaning on one another in their storm and if we will do the same thing and be one that the brother that's going through a storm can lean on and then when a storm comes our way and then we can lean on someone else and find that we've got strength in the church and we can be able to help each other with those hands that are hanging low and strengthen those feeble knees and we can just by our presence sometime or a kind word sometime that can be a little bit of encouragement to another brother or another sister along on our way. So he saw that they were working and that's a good thing for us to do when we're going through a storm. Let's work together. If it's on a church as a whole, let's work together to get through it. If it's an individual storm in your life, let's try to have some help up from the ones that God's provided us here on this earth to be able to work through this storm. And then it said in verse 49, when, he, when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and they cried out. And when they saw him walking, and he, they saw that it was a spirit. They got fearful and they cried out thinking it was a ghost, if you will. Now, but listen what they said in verse 50. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them. He spoke to them. Now listen what happened when he done this. And I want you to take this as something that would be very beneficial for us uh, if we'll just to understand uh, what God wants to do. We remember Brother Norman singing the song, uh, he's passing by this way. I'm glad he passed by my way. Uh, but before this all took place and they cried out to him, uh, notice what took place in the verse 48 up there at the end uh, when he was walking on the water and it said in the last part, and would have passed by them. He would have just kept right on going, but what did they do? And they cried out and he stopped and he started speaking unto them. And we may not know altogether what's going on around us in our storm. And we may not have known in our sins what to do and how to get out of that or even how to pray. But I'm thankful that the Lord, when he hears his children call out to him, that he will come by and give them some help. Had they not have cried out to him there that day, what would have happened? And we find he would have just kept right on going by. So while he's passing by our time here today, did you hear what the brother said a while ago? Now you've got the space, the time, and the opportunity. Now we give that to our unsaved very often. But it's for the church too. Now we've got the time and space and opportunity as a child of God to grow closer to Him. We've got the opportunity now as a child of God to help others out as they're going through a storm. And let's cry out to God when we're going through those situations and begin to pray to Him and in our importunity that we've referred to many times that can cause him to stop and begin to listen to the cries of his children and speak peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. I can't get for them right there. Yeah. They all saw him. They were troubled immediately. As soon as they called out upon him, they didn't even know altogether it was him. They thought it was a ghost. But when they cried out, they got help. We may not all come together on what to pray for. There's been times and situations in my life I didn't know what to pray for. There's been times I've been so burdened and had such a load that all I could say was, Oh Lord, and that's why the scripture teaches us that the Holy Spirit that he's provided for us as a child of God, and that there are times that it will intercede for us uh, when we don't know the words to say or what request to make of him in our time of need, and that I'm glad even when I was unsaved, I didn't know altogether what it took uh, to be a Christian other than what the brethren had told me, and I knew I was lost, I, I knew I was going to hell, uh, but 
cry and thankful when I cried out. And Lord, have mercy that he cleansed me. I didn't know altogether about what a sacrifice was or a propitiation or that he'd done all this for us. But he done it for me. And then I began to understand and grow as I began to go to him and talk to him and hear more preaching. That's why he's instructed the preacher once that one is saved to instruct them, to teach them, to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. So he speaks. Be of good cheer. I'm glad when the Lord speaks we can be happy. <coughs> and it's more than just mere happiness as we know it. It's true joy down on the inside. We can have joy in the fruit, verse, fruit of the Spirit that he provides for us as a child of his is joy. It is I, he said, be not afraid. That perfect love that the brother was talking about a while ago, it can cast out fear. Yeah. I'm thankful that if we'll trust in God, we don't have to be fearful. Now, I know the scripture teaches us that we are to fear the Lord. And that's the beginning of wisdom according to the scripture. But we're not to fear the things of this world. We're not to fear in that battle that the brother was talking about a while ago. We're to be armored up, having complete faith and confidence in him that we're going to be able to overcome. But there's going to be times that it's going to be hard for us to have that strength and that might. That's when we've got to lean on the Lord. Because when I'm weak, then I'm made strong. And then in verse 51, he went up unto them into the ship. Aren't you glad when he came in to help you? Amen. I'm glad when he got on board this ship. Yeah. And that's what he wants today is to come on the inside. And when he speaks that peace to you, that's what he does. That's what brings us that peace is when he comes in and comes on board. We know he's on board the church. We all understand that. That he's there, that's his bride, his lamb's wife, but that church is going to persevere with or without me and you. That's right. I'm thankful today that he come, wants to come on board us right here too. What is this body? It's a temple. What's it for? For the indwelling yes. of the Holy Ghost. And he wants to take up his residence inside of you. And he's able to clean you up and make you a fit subject for him right. if we will allow him to. And the wind ceased. That will all calm down. Oh, I'm glad for that other spiritual wind that starts blowing when the wind of this world starts clamoring and God speaks peace to him. I'm more thankful for that other wind that starts blowing as a storm. Uh, we used to hear Brother Nolan refer to hard uh, spiritual preaching as stormy preaching. And we all understand what that is. Being in a hard, a stormy sermon that's going out by the power of God. He's told us. And that God is a consuming fire and that power that he allows to send out in the spirit, preaching in the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And it'll grab you and shake you up down on the inside. And I'm thankful for those messages that spoke to me when I was unsaved. And I'm thankful for the ones that stomped my toes as a Christian and told me I needed to straighten up and do better as I go along on my journey. And they were still, look right here, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder. They'd already seen him back in chapter 4. If you'll remember, they'd already seen him when he woke up speak peace to another storm. Here they are amazed again. It never ceases to amaze me when he speaks to me. Oh, I'm thankful every time that that good, still, small voice comes into my life. And he uplifts us and we feel that good spirit. I bet it's new every time. Brother Tim Knacker used to refer to it as an antique gospel. Uh, even though it's old story, uh, yet it never grows old. Uh, that may sound odd to this world, calling it an old antique gospel. Uh, but yet it's new every time you hear it. Uh, the story and the preaching of the death, burial, and Jesus Christ, the core of the gospel message, that uh, should never get old to us that are Christians. It should bring joy to our heart and what that he does for us because that's the true essence of this message uh, of Christianity today that we can have salvation within our reach and be able to go be with him when this life is over and then it said they consider not the miracle of the loaves for their heart was hard right there in the midst of God working and using them they had a hard heart there at that point but God allowed it to come over here and he allowed their eyes to be opened we're not real careful we'll let our hearts get hard too we need to be real cautious about that. These trials and these storms that this world, the temptations of the old devil, they'll harden your heart. They will. They will. That's why we got to lean on God. If we're not careful, we'll be as bad as old Jonah. 
have a bitterness in our life toward those people that need to have repentance preached unto them and we need to have that compassion upon all mankind whether we like them or not as we go forward and now as he goes on down through here we find that he got to a destination wasn't altogether where he started at and where they intended to get but in verse 53 they got to a place and while that they got to this place because of that storm God was able to move and work and help people out in that place Amen. we may not get where we think we ought to be at certain points in our life but God's able to use us on our journey there and that's what he done for these folks right here. The Lord had an intention to get there. Same thing happened over there when he crossed over in that other storm. When he got to that place, he got over there and he helped a man that was possessed by a demon. Yeah. Found him there clothed in his right mind at the feet of Jesus. And he could do the same for us. Yeah. Another time there was a man called for the Lord. And I'm getting ready to close here. There was a man called for the Lord and his daughter was dying. Or a family member, I believe it was yeah. his daughter. And we find that as he was leaving there, going <clears throat> down there, maybe even in the, the funeral, getting ready to die, she was at the point of death. And as this man was going with the Lord to go to where his loved one was, there came a, a lady that had been sick to him. And I'm sure that man that wanted him to get over there where his daughter was was probably wringing his hands, Lord, we need to hurry. My daughter's about to die. We need to get over there. But he stopped there and tarried a little bit, and that woman reached out and touched him. Touched his garment, and she was healed. Making a long story short, and as he left, somebody else came by and needed some help. The Lord slowed down there and helped him. Then he eventually got over there where that man's loved one was. He was able to help them too. Yeah. Right on time, just like when Lazarus was dead. What did they say? Lord, he's been dead four days. He's thinking by now. He was right on time. Amen. May think that he's late in our mind. May not think we need to work where we're, we should be on our own time, but God's able to work. But this, as far as putting off and understanding and having patience, one thing that I don't have a bit of authority to tell you to wait and have patience on is getting your heart right with God. I don't have a bit of authority to tell you to wait till tomorrow, next week, another day. The Bible actually teaches us now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation according to the scripture the brother told you right there about the space time and opportunity we have no promise of tomorrow i used to say this you all heard me say it before i used to say to people as long as you got breath in the body that there's a hope there's a chance for them to get right but i've seen through experience people they get older. There's one right now. A couple actually right now come to my mind. Dementia. Alzheimer's. Let's yeah. take a hold of them. Yeah. One good sister in this church has got a husband right now that's, unless the Lord intervenes, he's put it off too long because Alzheimer's. Yeah. Dementia has gotten such a hold on him. I used to say as long as there's a breath in the body that there, there's a chance. As long as there's breath in the body and you're in your right mind, yes. there is a hope. Now, is God able to bring somebody to their right mind? He most certainly is. But let's, let's look at the reality of things. We have no promise of tomorrow. For that matter, we may die with our right mind, but this old heart of ours may just quit like that. There may be an accident out there. We may be young and healthy, may not have a problem. Death could be right around the corner. That's right. right. Yes. Of course, we've got no promise of tomorrow. Church, we should be mindful of that too. We tell that to our unsaved a lot. We should be mindful of that too. Yes. If we can do more, we need to be doing it. Yeah. It may be in the midst of a storm. Let's, let's, let's row together. Amen. If we're rowing together, the Lord sees that, just like he saw those brethren down there rowing together through the right against that tempest that was there. He recognized that, and he started going by them. Mm -hmm. Intended to pass right by there, but they hollered out to him, yeah. and he stopped. Holler out while he's, while he's not. Yes. How's he going to call you? He chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Believe what? Believe preaching. And he wants that we do that and step out on the faith that it blesses us to obtain. Yeah. Let the Lord know through repentance that we're sorry for the life we've lived. Confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. Let the church know what's taking place and then we can be buried with Christ in baptism Amen. and raised. 
for walking in the newness of life. I thought of this one time as someone was talking about things they've done and directions they've gone. And there's, a, there's a scripture in the Bible that tells us that church, sometimes we got to go do our first works. What did we do when we done our first works when we came to the Lord? We done just what I said. Is there times as a Christian, me and you, have got to go do some of that? There is. There's times I got to go, Lord, forgive me for that. I should have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have acted that way. And sometimes I got to confess it and let the one know that I've worked against that I shouldn't have said that or done that. Absolutely. That goes against our pride, but still, yet, it's what God wants us to do. Amen. And I'm thankful for how God's fixed up. Let's all stand. It's time for us to pray. <coughs> As we close, we'll give the invitation this way. If there's one ready for baptism, you can come down and let us know. Or if you're working on it and you want the church to be praying for you, you can come down and shake us by the hand and go right back to your seat. Uh, Sister Sue, will you sing a song for us while we, while we stay in church and be praying for our friends? I've been on my knees sending up my plea I've been bending low, Lord, I want to go, Lord, oh Lord, I want to go to heaven, hell is an awful, awful place, place. in the book of promise was
could be a problem for you. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants. Yep. Absolutely. I can't tell you that there's a day that don't go by that I try to listen to every day. Mm -hmm. I thank my God. I can, yeah. I can find my real place. The Lord can go to me. Yeah. The Lord. Help so you say it. Yes, he is. So I'm saying, mm -hmm. if you don't know our God, keep it quite with you. Please yeah. mm -hmm. get it for you. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Such yeah. a yeah. great salvation. peace and a calmness down in your soul that you feel that you, you can't explain it. That's right. It's like sister said, it's better felt than just told. Yeah. You can't tell about that. But once you have it, you don't want anything else. Tonight, this is the third weekend. There'll be service at Echo, six o'clock, Red Creek, six o'clock. There's service in the nine. Church back here next Sunday. Um, I won't be here next Sunday. I've got an appointment. We'll have the deacons here and they'll have somebody here to preach for you. So those that can be here to support them. And uh, then on the first Sunday in November, that's just two weeks away, Brother Tyler. Uh, from Brother Kevin Bowling's church. He was here, a young boy. He from up there, was here several months back. He's going to be here for us uh, to preach on the first Sunday morning. So uh, be thinking about that prayer for these meetings coming up. Friday night, we're not going to have services coming Friday night. We're going to call in on Friday nights for a little while and until uh, we see a little more interest involved with the church or Bible study, and then we'll move from there. Uh, so just be praying about that. All right. Anything else need to be said? <clears throat> All right. Let's Look, sir, we're planning to have another veteran's <clears throat> dinner, and I think it's on the 9th, Saturday, the 9th of November. And we'll get the flyers out to get them. Probably make flyers, flyers this week. We'll get them out. Okay. That's a good work. Anything else? All right. Hearts and minds free. We'll ask you to bow your heads. And uh, Brother Adi, can you pray this mission for us? Lord, it's again that we come before the throne of the 